What's up guys, Tobin here, 5M Family Homestead Channel. So as you can tell by the title of this video, uh, we've decided to kind of beef up our prepping uh, supplies that we have. Um, for, for obvious reasons, for us anyway, it's obvious. Um, you know, we're not doomsdayers, we're not a, uh, you know, we certainly don't hope that anything bad goes wrong. But the state of the of our economy and the state of our country right now is um, it's pretty shaky and uh, pretty up in the air. And I, you know, I don't, we don't bring a lot of politics into this channel. Um, and, I, and I don't really, I don't think it doesn't matter what side of the of, of the aisle you're on as far as politics go. Uh, I'm not on either one, to be honest with you. I think uh, independently as much as I can and about the independent issues. But uh, regardless. Um, it, it's hard not to, to realize that we're in a, uh, you know, our country and our, our economy and everything else uh, is probably a lot worse off now than it was a few years ago. So, uh, so we decided to do another round of beefing up our prepping. So we've got some other videos um, that we've done on prepping before in the past. I'll put a link to those uh, right now. We learned a lot. Uh, in, in, our, in our first round of doing it, uh, some of it from y'all for uh, giving us suggestions and things to do. Everything I got behind me here, uh, we made a run to Sam's. We went to Sam's, Walmart, and Lowe's to get the bucket lids. Um, we've probably got right about three hundred dollars worth of stuff in here. So we just want to show y'all, uh, show all this to y'all, and kind of encourage y'all to. Um, no matter how much space you have, no matter where you live, you can always have a little bit on hand in case there's um, um, an emergency or a shortage. I mean, every uh, every time you turn the news on, social media shortages, shortages. Um, they're talking about you know uh, there's cargo containers off of the off the west coast that are not going to get unloaded because there's nobody to unload them, and you know that affects all kinds of stuff. Uh, as a matter of fact, we couldn't find bucket lids. Uh, plastic bucket lids that we were, were easy to find the last time we did all our prepping stuff and we actually had to go, go to Lowe's and buy the uh, much more expensive ones um, and I assume that's why as well so uh, but being prepared you just never know natural disaster uh, the, the economy crashes who knows so um, so we like to be prepared and we encourage y'all to do it so we just want to share that with y'all so I'm gonna kind of show y'all some of the stuff uh, that, that we got I want to say first that we're gonna anything in here that might have bugs or weevils in it, we're gonna freeze that. That was one of the tips that we uh, got last time, and we did that with our other prepping stuff, um, and freeze it for two to three days to kill any bugs in there, because it will go uh, those those weevils or whatever's in there will go through that and eat it and basically just turn it on all into dust. We experienced that here recently with some deer corn we had that we left um, in a barrel for a long time and came back and the, the corn uh, was basically just like hollowed out, like they ate everything inside of it. So that the same thing had happened to, uh, to your food that you prep. So uh, anything in here that needs to be frozen is gonna be frozen after, we, uh, after this part of the video. All right, y'all, so uh, we got these, we got four food grade buckets from Walmart. These were the cheapest place to find them, like three bucks a piece. Uh, these were the lids I was talking about. They're, they're the fancier ones that have a screw on top to them. Um, so the last time we didn't get those, we got just the cheap snap-on ones, but we couldn't find those, so we went with these. Um, these alone were like nine dollars, eight, nine dollars a piece. We got four of them, so uh, it was thirty-something dollars, close to forty dollars for all that. Uh, water, keep 10 uh, cases of water on hand, like I said. Uh, we have 10 cases we can't, we have right now. We will, uh, today I'm gonna rotate those out. I'm gonna take these 10 and put them in there, and those other 10 are about, oh, eight or 10 months old. And we're gonna bring them out here, and then we'll start using those for our water we drink daily and stuff. Um, cooking oil, that's another thing that will get rotated out. That's not gonna stay in there all the time. We'll rotate it out as we, you know, when we buy more and, and rotate it through. Uh, cooking oil, cooking spray, I mean. Um, baking soda, it's one thing we don't have that I think would uh, come in really handy. This is a 15 pound sealed bag. So we're gonna throw that down in there and just, yeah, this stuff will probably be good for who knows how long. 
salt. Got to watch for moisture with the salt. Um, these were a dollar a piece at Sam's. We got four of them. We're gonna put. I'm probably gonna put them in uh, Ziploc baggies. And I have. I bought a big package of those little moisture packs um, off of Amazon, and I'll put a couple of those in there with it to draw the moisture out. And we'll have that. 25 pounds of white rice, 25 pounds of flour, 25 pounds of sugar. All that's gonna go in those in the buckets. Uh, oatmeal, instant mashed potatoes, big deal of pancake mix. Uh, we got three 12 pound bags of beans. There's Shanna, she's got home beans. See? Tuna and chicken noodle soup. So we're gonna get some of this stuff in the freezer, some of it down in the storm shelter. We'll take y'all with us. All right, everybody. It's been a few days since y'all last saw me with the prepping stuff. And I'm in the shop. I'm out here, I got the door closed. It is, we're getting 30 to 40 mile an hour winds with gust up to 40 to 50 mile per hour. And uh, so if you hear anything in the background, that's what it is. Um, so I try to get in here out of the, and close the door to get out of the, the noise. But uh, so I put all the prepping stuff in the freezer and it's been in there for three or four days, probably four or five days now. I took it out last night. If you've never done that before, um, I'm new to doing it, uh, but just a word of advice, when you pull everything out, the outside of the packages and containers are gonna have condensation on them as they come back up to room temperature. And so what I did was I put a fan on them, stuck them out, kind of spread them out. And uh, I stayed out here or came out here pretty regular and wiped it down, uh, everything down with a paper towel and uh, then would flip them over and keep the fan on them, wipe them down, etc. So let me show you here what I got now. So some of the stuff already went out in the storm shelter, but this is what I got left. So I got their pancake mix, uh, mashed potato mix, some salt, um, beans, rice, flour, stuff like that. So we're gonna put all these buckets right here been cleaned and we're gonna put all that stuff into these buckets before we put it in its final place. On videos in the past, we've showed y'all exactly where we keep our prepping stuff and we were advised strongly not to do that anymore because if it ever gets crazy, people might um, wanna come take it. I highly suggest that you don't ever try to come take anything from my property. It's not gonna end well for you, but, um, but I'm still not gonna show it. So, but before we do that, uh, before we get it all put in the buckets, um, I've got some taxidermy work to do. And we've actually had people asking about our taxidermy. I showed a lot of stuff last year, been showing a little bit less this year. YouTube's uh, restrictions that they put on hunting and stuff like that is a uh, little, little excessive and we can't show much without monetization issues. But I want to show y'all kind of the finished products and then some of these we're gonna mount on plaques. So let me show y'all. So these are three hogs that we finished up this week. And this right here is a really, really big hog. Now, when you see people on Facebook or on social media post a picture of a, of a pig and they say it's 300 pounds, most of the time it's not 300 pounds. Most of the time it is 175 pounds, 225 pounds in that range, and they're giving it a lot of uh, extra weight. But there really are uh, pigs out there and hogs out there that are that big, but they're just not common and it seems like everybody every time I see somebody post a picture They're saying it's that big and what you have to consider is a, a feral hog if you look at them from the top They're really narrow. They almost look like a triangle at the top like in the top of their back is the top of the triangle And they get wider as they go down if you look at a, at a domestic pig from the top. It's crazy wide from the get-go and that's the difference when you look at a domestic hog from the side versus a feral hog from the side they may look the same height wise, but how wide they are is what makes a difference in the weight, if that makes sense. So, but I'm guessing this right here was a 150 pound pig, just educated guess. This one was in the two, 250 pound, and this one probably was a 300 plus to 350 pound boar. Just like I said, just educated guesses. Uh, I've seen a lot of them come through and um, I could be off a little bit, but probably not much. So, 
Y'all do me a favor, go in the comments and tell me if y'all know what those are. Got two of them. I think they came from Wyoming. Um, got to mount one of those on a plaque. I'll give you a hint. There are a native species of North America. So, y'all drop a comment. Tell me what you think it is. I bet a couple of y'all get it. And then we got two deer down here. Uh, we got them out on plaques also. This uh, this one on the top right here was shot by a little girl. Well, not a little girl, a young lady hunter. And then this one on the bottom here was a uh, Oklahoma archery deer, and it's a really nice deer. You'll be able to get a better look of it once we uh, get it on a plaque and get on the wall. But I'm gonna show some of me doing that real quick and get all this stuff uh, squared away. The other thing I do is I cut these ugly yellow tags off that we use. Um, those are waterproof, boiling waterproof, um, all that. So we use those to identify all the animals so that we make sure the animal gets back to the uh, proper owner. But then uh, right now when I start calling the customers, I'll cut them off and just put one of our business cards on there to, to keep track of it. Um, so I'll cut those off. I'm gonna set everything up. I, one of the big things I, I like to do is take good pictures to send to the customers. They really like it, um, and you know it really represents my work well. When you do that, if you just kind of take a halfway picture, um, you know it, it doesn't look near as good. So I take the time, take good pictures. So I'm gonna do that, get them all tagged, get them all mounted on plaques, and then once we get done with that, we'll uh, do our prepping stuff. I don't know if I showed it uh, when I was talking a minute ago, but I'll show y'all. Shannon did our sign there, our price list. That's her pretty handwriting. I couldn't have done that. And then we got another one right here for when people walk in. It's a welcome sign. And that, that door opens up and they see it when they walk in. And then, another trivia. That sign right there, anybody know what uh, movie that's from? Possibly, arguably, the greatest movie of all time. Probably, definitely, unarguably, the top five best movies of all time. Y'all leave a comment and tell me if you know what movie that signs from. So, other trivia question to answer. These are pronghorn antelope. They are native to North America. Um, they're, I was listening to a podcast the other day and they were saying that they're the only genus of its species, which means there's no like cousins of it or anything like that. It's the only thing in the world um, that is like itself. And what's crazy is they actually... It's the only horned animal that actually sheds its horn. So this is a horn, uh, just like a like a goat would have, or a ram, or a bull, like a cow, bull cow um, would have. But it's the only horned animal that they every year they shed those, and then they regrow. So it's kind of interesting. So a little little uh, information for y'all. So all right, I'm gonna get to mountain some plaques real quick. Probably gonna put some music over what you're gonna see because I want to listen to my own music, Texas country. So let's get started.
all done with the heads. We called all the customers, got the pigs and the antelope over there, got all those hung up there, and te not called them, I text them all, sent them pictures, so uh, they'll be coming and picking those up and um, uh, getting us paid up here in the next week or two. So let me take you outside and show y'all what we have waiting for us this coming week in our shed. East Easton's out here with me. Uh, he'll hold he'll hold a flashlight for me if you see his hair. Ethan, why's your hair like that? Because it was crazy hair day today at school, and I had to dye it yellow. Everybody was calling me mustard hair. It's the funniest <laughs> thing today. Yeah, so it's so, uh, hashtag mustard hair in the comments. I don't know what day y'all are watching this, but it's a couple days before uh, Halloween, so they've been doing fun stuff at school. So it's Red Ribbon Week. So Red r Red, say that three times fast. Red Ribbon. I can't even say it. Ribbon. Here, red hold that. Ribbon week. So this is our skull shit out here, like we call it. So out there, I don't know if you can see, but um, it's, a, it's got a little bit of odor to it. We got deer heads galore. Got an elk in there, got a, a longhorn, and a bunch of deer heads. So as you can tell, we got a busy week coming next week, so. Uh, but Easton came out here and asked if he could help me do anything, so he's gonna help me get some of this stuff put in buckets. So we're gonna start on that right now. He's already got our little moisture packs put in and our bay leaves. Somebody told us that these bay leaves help keep critters out. And then we got moisture packs down in there to help with moisture, obviously. We'll put some on the top too, so hold those. All right, let's get started. So I was reading online, apparently you can keep it in these buckets for up to 30 years. Rice, beans, flour, things like that. Without having Mylar bags or anything, based upon what I read. So. The dates up there. So, it's in, it's the mashed potatoes and the rest are the measurements. Alright, put that in the trash bowl. Okay. All right, y'all, with Easton's help, we got it knocked out. We got uh, a whole bucket of beans with some left over. 
whole bucket of rice, whole bucket of flour. Uh, we got salt and instant taters in there, and then some miscellaneous stuff. Uh, what pancake is that? Stuff. What is that? Pancake mix. Some more flour, oatmeal, things like that. So we have some room. We have we have two or three other buckets that we have prepping stuff in, and we, I think we have some room for the rest of that stuff. If not, I'm about to grab another bucket. So which is not a big deal but we'll uh, get it all in there and then we put moisture packs in almost all of it um bay leaves and and the stuff that needed bay leaves in it and what else Ethan? like um we put two bay three bay leaves in each yeah no three moisture packs in each and one bay leaf in each and all these we put one two point moisture packs and one bay leaf and some we didn't put bay leaves because they would just break and there's no point yeah and so i i ordered those uh moisture packs off of amazon they were pretty pretty cheap so go buy yeah. them if you need some yeah so we've just been throwing them in there so guys i was explaining to easton you know here in texas back in february we had uh what everybody refers to as snowmageddon where we were snowed in for I wasn't snowed in. I worked every day during it, but uh, most people were snowed in, uh, no power, no water for several days. And Ethan was asking why we're doing this, and I told him, you know, what if we had a snowmageddon type thing happen that took a month or two uh, before it was over, you know, uh, something like that. So that's why we're prepared with our food, uh, with generators, with extra gas, with um, all kinds of stuff like that. I could go on and on and on. We've made several videos on all our prepping stuff, so you can go back and watch those, but. We need to make a playlist. Yes, we need to make a prepping playlist. That's a good idea. I need, I need to do that. So No matter what, we're going to have propane tanks. Yeah. Because uh, yeah. we, uh, we do what we do. That's what I should say. We do taxidermy is what he's been saying. Uh, and we have we have about 10 or 12 propane tanks that we keep full most of the time. Um, and, and we have uh, heaters that we can run off those and stuff like that. So uh, we're... You know, probably not as prepared as some people, but more a lot more prepared than than some. So, but uh, I mean, if we run out of this food, we have fish and stuff on there. We can go get that's fish true. with. That's Yep. And we actually uh, got our one feeder ba pig back a few um, a month or two ago, and then we got another one that we should be picking up this week. And our freezer is very very full, and we're thankful for that. Hopefully, we'll have time to go do some deer hunting this year. I hope. I, I hope too. We're very busy with taxidermy. Easton started his theater. We need to show you all that. Um, he started a theater class. Um, Reed's playing baseball, so we're very busy. But we're going to try to get uh, out. Last year, we put two or three deer in the freezer. I'd hope to do that again this year. So, oh, did we tell him about the feeder fell down? Uh, at the lease. Uh -huh. Yes, that was a couple of videos ago. Oh, so yeah. we talked about that. Go so. watch that one. All right, y'all. Thank y'all very much for watching. I uh, hope y'all enjoyed this video. Uh, if you did, please hit that subscribe button uh, and the notification bell. Hey, this is my part. All right, you can go. Make sure, before you click off of this video, make sure you subscribe, hit that like button, hit the notification bell, and like this video. Make sure you go to any videos, one right here and one right here, the one that YouTube recommends. So you go click on those, and we'll see you guys on the next video. See y'all.